So my name is Gabe Gutierrez, and I am a program coordinator with the Livable San Diego support team. All right. Hey, everyone. My name is Carly Wilson, and I'm an analyst with the Live Well San Diego support team. And we are here today to tell you a little bit more about Live Well San Diego. So I will go ahead and start sharing my screen here if it lets me. Make sure I got the right one. All right. And can you all see it? I guess you can't talk. But I will assume, Gabe, if you can see it, that everyone else can as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with probably the most basic question there is, which is what is Live Well San Diego? And if Gabe, you wanna go ahead and kick it off? Sure, Live Well San Diego is one vision of a region that is building better health, living safely and thriving. Awesome, and to tell us a little bit more about that, we've got a quick video here. Hi, Carly, I think that your sound may not be associated with your video. So when you share your screen, if you could just put um, click the audio a component and I'll share too. Let's see here. Let's reshare and see if that helps. So when you click share, there should be a little button that says audio or computer audio, and it'll, it'll sync into the Zoom. Okay, sorry, I'm just... It's not giving me the option to share my screen anymore. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Gabe, if you want to just talk a little bit more about Live Well again, um, and then, or if not, we can jump back into the video right after. All right. So Live Well San Diego is, a, is one vision of a region that is building better health, living safely and thriving. So three separate categories of things. And as a vision, um, the County of San Diego, okay, let's try it. Can you click the share screen again? Uh, Carly, you know what you need to do? You need to unshare your screen and then reshare your screen. But when you're resharing, you're going to click the audio button. That's going to allow you to be able to, um, to share the audio. All right. I, I think I got it. Okay. All right. How about now? In 2010, a big idea was born. What if we got government and private partners in the community together to create a region that's building better health, living safely, and thriving. We called it Live Well San Diego. Several years later, Live Well has become a movement, hundreds of partners in the community sharing what is now the county's vision. You can't tell if you're successful unless you track your progress. We've started to see trends, trends that show how working together creates successful outcomes. These top 10 indicators are organized into five areas of influence that we know are essential for overall health and well-being. Let's begin with health. The numbers show people are living longer and being more independent later in life. Brown rice. To drive this change, partners are joining with the county to host health fairs, fitness classes, and conferences focused on chronic disease prevention and aging well that connect attendees with information and resources. New technology platforms are being designed to better connect people with the services they need, ranging from housing to medication and many things in between. Events like Love Your Heart and the Live Well San Diego 5K create opportunities for people to come together and make healthy choices that support active living. Next comes knowledge, measured by the number of people with high school and college degrees. Education influences economic, social, and psychological well-being. Community partners offer training and mentorship programs to ensure people from diverse backgrounds have the knowledge and skills they need to thrive. After school and summer reading programs help improve literacy and keep kids out of trouble. The third area of influence is standard of living, which looks at the unemployment rate and cost of living. Financial stability is essential. Having enough resources to afford the basics has a positive influence on your health and well-being. And that extends to the entire community, 
partners are helping by offering financial literacy classes for seniors, veterans, and young adults. Job training programs and networking events help people land their next job. Local businesses are creating employee wellness programs and events that encourage staff to eat healthier, take stretch breaks, and even bike to work. The community area of influence includes measures of safety, looking at crime rates and the environment, both air quality and easy access to green spaces. Partners are helping to make the environment cleaner and greener by hosting waste-saving symposiums and funding bikeability improvement plans. We've got spinach, carrots, snow peas. Empty lots are being converted into community gardens where neighbors are joining together to grow healthy food for themselves and their loved ones. And youth are completing restorative justice programs and graduating from resident leader training academies that set them up to be advocates for positive change, including safer streets and cleaner outdoor spaces. And finally, in the social area of influence, we're measuring support for vulnerable populations and volunteer rates, how we are supporting each other to live well. We know that communities thrive when people get to know their neighbors. People feel safer being outside. Crime goes down. People get more exercise if they're connected to others. The county and partners are working together to encourage community connections and engaged citizens. Did you know that San Diego County is one of the largest refugee resettlement sites in the state of California, welcoming newly arriving refugees from across the world? Partners help out with services designed to make a difficult transition to a new country a little easier. Food donation events and beach cleanup days make it easier for San Diegans to come together for the greater good. And cooking classes and meal delivery services ensure that aging adults have healthy food to eat. As more partners join the movement, they're expanding the reach of collective efforts through innovative programs and services. Together with the leadership of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors and supported by county staff, hundreds of recognized partners are helping San Diegans be healthy, safe, and thriving for generations to come. So now that we know a little bit more about what Live Well San Diego is, why don't we talk about how it came to be? So Live Well San Diego started with these three numbers here. So three behaviors, so no physical activity, poor diet and tobacco usage um, that result in four diseases, cancer, heart disease and stroke, type two diabetes and lung disease, and that accounts for more than 50% of the deaths in San Diego County. Um, so then here we can see that these deaths and diseases and, you know, lack of activity and tobacco usage really have an economic impact on the county. Um, so we know that these four diseases mentioned above have that direct cost of $4.6 billion. And so what do we do about it? How can we work towards ensuring, you know, lowering this economic burden to our community? Um, so we work here through the Live Well San Diego vision. And so it started in July of 2010 um, with that first component. So that's gonna be building better health. And so building better health consists of improving access to quality care, supporting healthy eating, increasing physical activity and stopping tobacco and other drug use. The next component of the vision is living safely, um, which was approved by our board in uh, November or October of 2012. And living safely means that residents are protected from crime and abuse, that neighborhoods feel like a safe place to live and walk and work, and that communities are resilient to disaster and emergencies. And so the final component of the vision, thriving, that was approved uh, last in October of 2014 by our board. And so thriving, you know, includes all of those add-ons once you're already, you know, you're healthy and you're safe. And so then you can feel like you can contribute further to your society. So that's civic life and community activities, um, ensuring that we have, you know, built a natural environment. So that includes um, public transit and parks and ensuring prosperity and economy and education. So, you know, you have those opportunities to succeed and to thrive. All right, and then moving right along into what our county looks like. And so how do we put this vision into action? So we know this is an audacious vision and now we have to talk about how we're gonna deploy it. 
So in San Diego that we know and we love, it's an incredibly diverse region and an incredibly large region. Um, at over 4,500 square miles, we have 3.3 million people living here. And so we've just divided these into, you know, some sub-regional areas, about six of them. And let's see here. So within these 4,500 square miles, um, that 3.3 million number is, you know, that makes us a larger population than about 21 US states. We're the fifth largest county and the second largest in California. We have 18 municipalities, 36 unincorporated towns, 18 tribal nations, and 42 school districts. And so going a little deeper into our total population. Um, so here's a breakdown of the you know, demographics here. We know it, we see it every day. We see it in all the food options we eat and the different cultures you know, in all of our little communities. And so finally, we also see it in the languages spoken. So there's over 100 languages spoken in the region. We're home to the largest, uh, the nation's largest concentration of military personnel. We have the second largest resettlement, re refugee resettlement site in California and one of the busiest international border crossings in the world here in San Ysidro. All right, so knowing what we know about the diversity and the size of our region, we have to ask ourselves, can the county do this alone? We know the vision is audacious. Um, so how do we get it done? We know that even with a workforce of 17,000 here at the county, the answer is no, we can't do it by ourselves. We need partners. Uh, and so we use that collective impact model. And so of course we have a quick video on what that is and uh, how we can put it into action. The number and complexity of challenges facing our world can be overwhelming. When individual organizations attempt to tackle the most daunting problems, success stories are all too rare. Many innovative approaches have been tried, too few have worked. However, when organizations work together under the right conditions, they can accomplish great things. One particularly effective means of collaboration is collective impact. Using the collective impact approach, a number of complex social challenges have been addressed and some remarkable results have been achieved. Youth incarcerations dropped by 45% in just three years with no change in public safety, improving the lives of thousands of youths. 6,000 public housing residents were placed in new jobs during the recession. More than 1,000 acres were restored and over 280 million pounds of pollution voluntarily reduced to conserve and restore a river. Organizations utilizing a collective impact approach do the following. Agree to a common goal. Agree to track progress in the same way, which allows for continuous improvement. Do what each does best while identifying new ways to work together. Have consistent communication. And finally, have skilled and dedicated resources to support ongoing efforts. The world's toughest challenges aren't going away. In fact, many experts predict they will continue to grow in both number and complexity. Solving these problems requires a range of expertise from a number of diverse organizations. Collective impact is a proven approach, helping organizations work together to move mountains. I love that part. Pass it over to Gabe, yeah, to tell us a little bit more about collective impact. So I, I love collective impact, right? Because I mean, it just sounds exactly what it sounds like. It's it's everybody working together uh, collectively to make an impact. So right here, you see uh, the liberal San Diego vision. You see that as this core spoke around all these various collective impact uh, green spokes um, that that are various things going on in our region, and it's it's what we are doing together to be able to make sure that we're doing these really audacious goals, once again, of building better health, living safely and thriving. And there's five conditions of collective impact. And these five conditions were done by the Stanford Social Innovation Review back in 2011. And they include first having a common agenda, making sure that there's a shared vision between all people there, that there's this expectation of where they're trying to go. And once that is established, then you have shared measurements. And these are the shared measurements to know that we are walking and moving toward that vision. And those measurements are simple, actionable, and sub-regional. 
Next, we have mutually reinforcing activities. Whenever you're working on a team, you want to make sure that you're working together. It's kind of like being on a boat. You want everybody rowing in the same direction, right? You don't want people rowing in different directions. So mutually reinforcing activities allows us to make sure that we're maximizing our opportunities and going to that uh, shared common agenda and that shared vision together. Um, with that, you need continuous communication. Things change all the time and we have to be flexible. So continuous communication allows us to be able to have consistent conversations with our teams and with our partners and make sure that we're working in that direction. And then lastly, we have a backbone organization. We have an organization that's kind of focused on making sure and supporting that these efforts, these collective impact efforts are, are going together. And these are kind of like almost an administrative support function um, that, that exists within the conditions of collective impact. So next we have our Live Well Partners, which is many of you on this. And, and once again, thank you for being here today. The County of San Diego has over 505 recognized partners as of um, earlier this year. And you can see how that started. First, it started out with one partner back in, in 2011, 2012. And little by little, we continue to grow. And we've been able to grow in, a, in various ways. You can see now that we have various uh, municipal governments uh, 16 of the 18 cities basically are, are, are part of the Liberal San Diego vision. We have various school districts, 39 school districts, that's over half a million students in our region. And you can also see a breakdown of our partners by the sectors. We have business and media, cities and government. And of course, you can see we have a large amount of community and faith-based organizations. Oh, the video. <laughs> Dealing with Live Well San Diego has been just a blessing. I'm able to go to things like the Live Well events and speak at different forums, which is really incredible, and partner with all these Live Well partners. grassrooted organization. It's, it's the strength of partnerships and relationships that is moving this forward. about Live Well San Diego is it really puts the person at the center of development. Our vision is that we want to leave a legacy for the next generations to come. Together, we've been very powerful. We've shown the results that you can get are amazing, and we look forward to continuing to work on these partnerships into the future. How do we collaborate? Uh, on a regular basis? How do we make that part of our DNA and the DNA of, of other organizations? 
Um, once you do that, true change starts happening. Now that's a collective impact video. <laughs> Next, we have our uh, resident, uh, resident Leadership Academy. So Resident Leadership Academies happen all over San Diego County and they're pretty awesome. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. Residents in the neighborhood, supporting community members to create better, healthier neighborhoods. These participants learn ways to involve local grassroots networks and community improvement projects, and they engage residents in activities and knowledge that lead to healthier, neighborhoods and environments. So there's a problem in your neighborhood. These are the folks that are looking to make those positive changes. So as was mentioned earlier, that we use four strategic approaches when it comes to how we accomplish this level San Diego vision. And these strategic approaches include building a better service delivery system, supporting positive choices, pursuing policy and environmental changes and improving the culture within the county as an organization. So you can see right here that the County of San Diego as an organization, we operate with a five-year strategic plan. So when you took at the top left, you could see that there's a 2018 to 2023 strategic plan. And, and this is where we have our level of San Diego vision, you know, basically implemented as a big part of it. So, or as a core part of it. So you can see that our vision is part of that strategic plan and it's joined by our mission and our values. You can also look on the right and you'll see that we have an operational plan and our operational plan is over the course of two years. And you can also see that our Livel San Diego um, vision is part of that operational two-year plan. And then additionally, when it comes to operations, our general management system, which is how we work every day at the county, our strategic framework for this level San Diego vision is part of that general management system. So this is something that we're doing every single day in all the work that we do. We're either working directly to it or we're supporting the level San Diego vision. All right, so digging a little deeper onto changing the culture from within. So to change the culture from within, we really have to rethink how we do business. And as we heard uh, yesterday during Trivian's fantastic keynote in the morning, he mentioned that the best way to get buy-in for a vision is to lead by example. So we do that here at the county. We do, you know, build better health by our multiple programs and initiatives that were mentioned earlier, such as the Live Well 5K, Love Your Heart. We encourage, you know, both employees and community members to participate in these. Um, we live safely by ensuring that our employees feel supported and engaged at work and through employee resource groups and um, our diversity and inclusion committees. And finally, we thrive by ensuring that, you know, our employees have that work-life balance. They can do yoga during their lunch breaks and, you know, they really feel connected to their mission at work and, you know, we provide them continuous opportunities for that development. So one of the first things that our County of San Diego employees do is take the Strengths Finder test and that test kind of gives us a good idea of what our employees are good at, how can we relate best to them, how you work best, um, and gives us, you know, a really good opportunity to capitalize on our skills and our strengths. And so we heard during this morning's keynote that, you know, we work best when we feel safe and supported in our workplace. And this really has a direct impact on our ability to uh, provide services to our customers and our stakeholders, and to ensure that we're approaching our work in a very people-centric way as opposed to that task-centric way. So finally here, you can see the complete pyramid and we're gonna jump down now to our uh, 10 Live Well San Diego indicators, which show us in numbers, the work and progress we're making. And Gabe, if you wanna talk a little bit more about those. Sure, so our Live Well San Diego indicators, when we're talking about the shared vision and we're looking at you know, our shared measurements, this is our shared measurements it's for people in San Diego County. So all of you on this today, this morning, thank you. And our 500 Live Well partners, we're looking at these indicators is sort of like a report card to see how we're doing and if we're working toward that vision of building better health, living safely and thriving. So you can, you can see right here, we have these 10 indicators and one of them is a life expectancy. And you can see right here that our life expectancy for somebody who lives in San Diego County is 82.7 years. 
We can look at our quality of life. You can see it's pretty high at 94.9, but you can also get ideas about our education rate with uh, how many people having a high school diploma or unemployment rate. You can also see things that are related to our standard of living and areas that we should continue to look for improvement, which can also include right here, our income with 57.4% of our population spending at least a third of their household income on housing. As you know, living in San Diego is a pretty expensive place to live. So this is something that we, as, a, as the county and with our partners, are looking at different ways on how we can create more opportunities to, to, to make a, a, a better change in this direction. But you can also see on the other categories of community and social, we can see other things, including how much pop, uh, of the population is volunteering. And we can see right here that 25.5% of our population volunteers. Next slide. So I want to take a moment in this, we're going to go through like a, a deep dive of some of these numbers uh, over the course of time. So when we look at the top left, we can look at volunteerism. And we can see over time that volunteerism in San Diego County kind of goes from one out of three people down to one out of four and kind of back and forth over time. Right now we're at about one out of four, right? A little over that with about a half a percentage. When we look over on the right, we can also see some information here um, regarding community spaces. And we can see how that's transitioning over time. And then you can also look over here at unemployment rate. And we can take a look and we can see how we were doing with unemployment as it was falling from 6.3% down to a, a, all, you know, a low of 3.9%. But we can see how what happened with COVID-19 um, uh, and, and the recent pandemic or current pandemic uh, getting us to as high as 15.5% of our population being unemployed. And even right now, we see a, a dramatic difference from 15.5 down a slope to 7.3, but we still have work to go in that direction as well. And the next, I really want to focus on this next slide. This is the life expectancy for folks who are living in San Diego based on community. And as you can see, it's not a straight line. It's not a flat line. We have great life expectancy differences in our region. I mean, these are some of those are very, very large with some communities um, being able to live as long as like, 89 years old and others like the Palma uh, Indian Reservation um, being dramatically less than that. And you can see with these large changes that we do not have outcomes um, that are equitable in our region at this time regarding life expectancy. So what does that mean? It means that we know that these communities that don't have these higher life expectancy numbers, we need to see what we can do regarding resources and programming to make sure that we can start to bring more equity to the slide so that somebody who's born in one zip code doesn't, doesn't have the same, um, has the same lifelong expectations as someone born in a more affluent um, zip code. All right, um, so this is another slide regarding a mutually reinforcing activities. So as a county, we operate with the end in mind. So what does that mean? We think about our goal, our vision, where we're trying to go, and then we move backwards on how we get there. So our goal right now, as you saw from the last slide, is we want to increase life expectancy, right? And how do we do that? We look at our short-term goals, our mid-term goals, and long-term goals. So we're starting with the long-term goal. We want to decrease deaths. And Carly mentioned earlier, three, four, 50, three behaviors that cause four diseases that was over 50% of the deaths in San Diego County. So we want to focus on those three behaviors. Then when we pull it back a little bit more, we want to focus on obesity. We want to focus on decreasing it. So that's a midterm goal that we have. And then how do we do a reduction in obesity is we look at improving diet and exercise. Then that goes into the actions that we take. We want people to eat healthy food. So we as an agency will do work to have more CalFresh enrollment and process the CalFresh applications in a timely manner. Additionally, our land use and environmental group is looking to help with our increase in physical activity, which means that we're trying to create more recreational opportunities. So that means that we're maintaining our parks. And then also, we wanna make sure that there's workplace wellness, that the various businesses and organizations in San Diego County have programs that are focused on the wellness of their employees. And what that does is it creates employee participation by having a worksite wellness program. And that, our partner for that is the business community and chambers. And, uh, and some of our level partners. All right, so here is our San Diego County data portal. So a lot of the data that we discussed is right here at our data portal. And you can get there by going to data, 
www.sanigocounty.gov. And if you do that, you'll be able to find our liberal San Diego indicators, as well as other indicators um, and other data that, that you can utilize to learn more about what's going on in your region. And for the nonprofits that are making strategic decisions, this is a great tool to be able to see how we're doing and, and how we can continue to collaborate. And you can see where we're doing with our indicators. Awesome, thanks, Gabe. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about what Live Well San Diego is and all of those contributing components, um, we want to take a minute to kind of look at how us as individuals, both on large and small scales, can help contribute to this vision. Um, so in the chat, if you want to just pop in a few things, either whether it's at work and how your department or organization um, contributes to healthy, safe, and thriving. Um, so this could be anything like, you know, pursuing policy and environmental changes, um, things talked about in the keynote this morning, you know, making sure that those policies and procedures are in place to make us feel safe and supported at work. It could be things at home. So how do you incorporate healthy, safe, and thriving at home? So are you recycling? Are you picking up trash on the street? Are you, you know, instilling these values in your children? Things like that. So anything large, anything small, it all adds up, you know, to create this vision that we as a region, you know, continue to strive for. All right, and very last, we do have a quick pop quiz. So one more thing in the chat, if you wanna put the answer, Live Well San Diego is a 10-year project, a strategic plan, a vision, an initiative, or a funding system. So I'll give everyone a couple seconds, think about it, know the answer. All right, so I feel like we've said it time and time again, Live Well San Diego is a vision, a vision of a region that's building better health, living safely and thriving. And so with this vision, we've seen it, you know, of course, start here in San Diego, but it's spread to, you know, many municipalities and governments throughout the world. We can look at the ways, the different ways that Live Well San Diego allows us to share and receive best practices, um, you know, regionally, nationally, globally, and we're able to learn from each other and help promote the vision of building better health, living safely and thriving. And so we'll see going all the way around the world and here are a few other organizations that kind of follow the same vision. We're in Australia. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're gonna have to reach there. We're gonna have to work a little harder, <laughs> more partners. All right, and so here's our website at the end. That's where you can find a lot more community resources as well as all that data that Gabe shared with us. And finally, any questions? And of course, feel free to visit our website or email us at lwsd.hhsa at sdcounty.ca.gov anytime um, with any questions or concerns or thoughts or comments on the vision. All right, and anything else you wanted to add, Gabe? I no, just appreciate all of you being here this morning and learning more about the Liberal San Diego vision. Obviously, we can't do it without you. We are all a big team and we all have audacious goals that we wanna to continue to move toward. And, and just definitely appreciate all of you taking the time to, to come to uh, this meeting this morning. And we definitely look forward to new and exciting ways that we can partner. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. We appreciate your time and we'll talk soon.